The following audio may contain the personal testimonials of some independent Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to healthy living and weight loss will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. In addition, this audio may contain income or earnings representations of some independent Optavia coaches. Optavia makes no guarantee of financial success. Success with Optavia results from successful sales efforts, which requires hard work, diligence, skill, persistence, competence, and leadership. Please see the Optavia Income Disclosure Statement for statistics on actual earnings of coaches under the U.S. Compensation Plan, which differs from the International Compensation Plan. Yours in health, the Optavia team. Right. Welcome, welcome to our Habits of Health call. As you're coming into the room, go ahead and find the little chat screen and let us know where you're coming from, what state you live in. Probably most of America is cold, so I'd say the weather, but go ahead and just let us know where you're all tuning in from tonight and we will get started. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Nicole DeWard and I'm honored to host this amazing Habits of Health call tonight. I live in Roswell, Georgia, and I've been coaching for nine years. I can't believe it's been almost nine years. It's crazy. Time flies when you're having fun. And it's such an honor to be uh, hosting this call tonight because over the last uh, several years, and we've been moving into this idea of wellness, and Dr. A has released your life book and the new, the new edition of the Habits of Health. And it has been a game changer. It truly has revolutionized my life, the way I think about things, because I'm able to write it out. And I've seen that with my clients over and over again, and it is just amazing. And so over the next 30 minutes, you're gonna hear about NEAT, this idea of how do you burn calories without actually exercising. And as a personal trainer uh, for the last 12 years, I'm really excited to tell you about that. But even better, my great friend Becca Tinter is going to be on right after for another 30 minutes to tell you all about the benefits of our amazing opportunity with coaching. So you don't want to miss this next 60 minutes that will really move you forward in your health in so many ways. And so we appreciate your time. We know time is valuable, especially this time of year as we're approaching the holidays and there's all the hustle and bustle, but to take time out for yourself. That is what's so important. And so you honor yourself with this time. This is a gift that you take in order to fill yourself with information that you're gonna take into your life and really implement it for growth. And so we're gonna hop right in to talk about this idea of NEAT. So NEAT is actually stands for non-exercise activity thermogenesis, so it sounds really fancy. But really all that means is, how do we become this perpetual motion machine? Like I said, really burning calories without this intentional exercise. And so over the next 30 minutes, we're gonna cover increasing activity level without a planned exercise like at the gym, discovering new ways to increase that, and then also exploring how healthy motion can help you rewrite your story. And isn't that what getting healthy is all about anyway? Is how we rewrite the story of our life. It's not to say that the story that has happened hasn't made us who we are today, but for many of us, we are looking forward. And instead of spending time looking in that rear view mirror, looking behind us, we wanna look forward at what's to come. And so as we rewrite the story, it's all about how we can really move ourselves forward in the way of meat for tonight in this element 17. And so here's just a quick stat for you. A recent survey says that 86% of Americans sit all day. And I actually found some other stats that tell us that on average, <laughs> from the natural, naturalnews.com and the hopkinsmedicine.com says, Americans sit 11 hours a day. 
and that sedentary lifestyles are responsible for an estimated, are you ready for this, $24 billion in direct medical spending. That totally blew me away. Here's another one. 65% of Americans watch two or more hours of TV a day. And I'm not going to lie, I really enjoy a Netflix as I decompress for the evening, but over two hours a day is not good for our bodies and, and not good for our minds in so many ways and for so many reasons. And this, a cup, two more, 20% of all deaths of people 35 and older are attributed to a lack of activity. And the last one, 300,000 deaths occur annually due to inactivity and poor diet. And that is why we are here as Optavia. Optavia actually means the optimal way, right? The optimal way. And the optimal way is not spending time being on our butts all day. That is not going to move us forward in our health. And somebody in the chat just said, sitting is the new smoking. And that is entirely true. So we're going to talk tonight about what the difference is between neat and eat. <laughs> and eat actually stands for the exercise part, right? Here we have habits of motion in this pie chart talks about exercise and movement. And on this pie chart in particular, the exercise that is the green, that's your intentional exercise. And the orange is everything else that you even, so I'm moving my arms, right? I'm, I'm burning neat points here. I'm getting my neat points. So stand, all these things we're going to get into tonight, but I just want you to see, I hear all the time. I know people say, well, I know that the reason why I'm overweight is because I don't exercise enough. And I can understand why people get this misinformation, but the reality is, is that it's only a very small fraction of the calories we burn because what we really need to do is to become a perpetual motion machine. And so, like I said, when NEAT has the non, EAT is exercise activity thermogenesis, how the body burns calories. Those are things that you do that are planned, whether they're at the gym or they're at home or they're walking with a friend. These are intentional time blocks. And actually, it's recommended that we get 210 minutes of activity planned eat every every week so that is 30 minutes a day and we're going to be talking about that more in element 18 next week but for tonight what we're talking about is non-exercise activity thermogenesis these are things that we do that are almost subconscious they're involuntary some of them we actually do need to think about and implement which is why we're going to talk about them tonight so that you can figure out some things that maybe you're doing really well and where you can make some improvement. So I wanna go through quickly uh, so many ways <laughs> on here that the PowerPoint goes through, like you make your bed, you use a broom, hide the TV remote from your spouse, you can take a walk after dinner, walk your dogs, get, get up several times while you're sitting down, stand while you talk on the phone. I'm actually standing as I present this to you, because I talk better while I'm standing up. I feel like I have more energy. Don't you feel it when you go from sitting to standing, how it really empowers your body? Of course, you can park further away from the grocery store or any place that you park into. You can bike to work. You can use a little uh, buggy at the store, engage in outside activities. These are things that you can do all the time to increase NEAT. But the big part of what we're going to talk about tonight is this, the six S's of success. And these six things are stance, standing, strolling, stairs, samba, and switch. Now, these things are really what Dr. A, I remember when uh, Dr. A came out with the Habits of Health, and it was really this revolutionary idea that we should actually be spending more of our time and our efforts implementing these small daily movements into our life. And so many of us are focused on how I'm gonna to get to the gym. How am I gonna go for the run? How am I gonna do all of these things? And it's overwhelming and then you do nothing. I, I did really well for about three weeks and then I just 
fell off the wagon. Does that sound like maybe anything you've ever said before? Right? But if these are things that we implement into our daily life, these are things that will move you forward for lifelong. Because Optavia is about healthy habits one at a time, right? And we're going to implement these things in our life. And I want to give you some ideas around these six S's to really master in your life to give you the greatest success. So we're going to start with the first one, stance. And of course, it's about posture. It's about the way you stand and the way you sit. So I'm going to start with sitting because as we know, so we, the sitting disease here is really not doing well for America especially. When you sit, your metabolism is slowed down. It turns off your muscles. Like it's just not good for your body. And so if we do need to sit, because there are times that you can't stand while driving, right? There's going to have to be things that you can do to increase your stance while sitting. And so can't do this one in, a, in the car. So please don't do this in the car. But when you are seated, like at church, or if you're in a class, I really encourage you to inch forward so that you're seated towards the front so that your back is not resting upon the seat so that you can sit up tall. You're going to make sure that your ankles are directly under your knees. So many people put their feet way under their seat, which is really bad for your posture, bad for your back. And you want to be make, you want to make sure that your feet are shoulder width apart. So you want to look down, make sure your feet are pointing straight. The ankles are directly over your knees. You're sitting up tall. Your spine is neutral. So if you, somebody looked at you from the side, they wouldn't see like a little sway in your back. So that you're going to sit up tall. You're going to have a neutral spine and you're going to roll your shoulders back. And then you're going to pull your belly button into your spine. Now this doesn't mean that you're going to suck it in because that's not comfortable and not something you're going to be able to hold for very long. But you're going to go up like this and then tighten your abs. I like to play this little game when I'm training. I'll go around to my clients and say, I'm going to, I'm going to punch your little belly in a, you know, a friendly punch. Of course, I'm going to give you a little punch to make sure your abs are on because you want to draw in, it's called the draw in maneuver. And you want to hold your posture so well that your abs are engaged and in that drawn protective measure all the time because it's burning calories while you're sitting and we got to do whatever we can while we're sitting. Now, when you're in a car, I see a lot of these seats really leaning back and the arm is out and they're like, you know, having a good old time while they're driving. This is not good for your posture. And you definitely are not paying attention to the road and this is happening. So I recommend that you use that little lever and get your seat up so that you can sit up straight. Any chiropractors in the house listening tonight, you want to lean back. This is what a tip I got from my chiropractor that you want to lean back so that your head is actually touching your headrest. You want to lean back and then your hands are at 10 and two and your elbows are gently resting in front of you. They are not reached out to the steering wheel. So when you're sitting, it's important to make sure that you're making con a conscious effort to have good posture while you are seated. Okay. So sitting or when you're standing, let's talk a little bit about posture from the side, you're going to do the same thing. So when you're standing up and we're going to move into that second one, we're going to blend those two together. Feet are shoulder width apart. Toes are facing forward. Hips are level. I'm going to draw in my belly button. So my abs are nice and active and I'm going to roll my shoulders back and I'm going to lift my chest up and think about like part forward. So that'll really help because we live in a society where people talk to each other like this, right? And we want to come here. And what I notice is that when people begin to work on their posture, guess what increases? Their confidence. And so if you are here tonight looking for more confidence, this one tip will just give you the catalyst you need. Because when you stand up straight, when you act now, not just like, your mom saying, stand up straight. You know, that's not what I mean. I mean the intentional feet shoulder width apart, toes forward, knees over my ankles, my hips are level. 
I'm gonna come up nice and straight. I'm gonna draw in my belly button. I'm gonna roll my shoulders back and down and I'm gonna lift my heart forward. That increases your confidence and you will approach your day and you will show up in your world very differently when you practice your posture. And standing, any time that you can stand is so important that you move from sitting to standing. When I'm even at a conference, I like to stand in the back of the room because sitting so long just doesn't feel right for me. And you burn more calories. Remember I was saying that you're, when you're seated, it slows your metabolism and it turns off all the muscles in your lower body. Well, when you stand up for five minutes, it recovers all of those things. So just five minutes. So Dr. A recommends that you take a break in an hour, like if you're working hard, that you stand up and move around for about 20 minutes if you can in that hour block. But if you can get five minutes in here and there, and I saw it in the chat, progress, not perfection. We are looking to make progress all the time, layering these healthy habits as we go, because it's not like one day you're gonna wake up and have all this in the bag. These are things that you're gonna always do, working on your posture and finding an opportunity to stand more often. So we're gonna move to the third one, which is strolling. And strolling is that, I always think about going for a little walk after dinner, going for a little stroll. You just naturally feel better when you get out in the fresh air and you go for a walk. Well, I wanna tell this funny story because my husband works for a large corporation and they have these like insurance incentives and they gave him a, a Fitbit, I think it was, maybe it was a knockoff Fitbit, but he had to, do certain things and one of them was he had to get his steps in and one day I came in and he was up in our bedroom and he was laying in the bed I don't know if he was reading a book or watching Netflix he was relaxing but he had his Fitbit in his hand he's gonna kill me for telling the story on national <laughs> he's going he's waving his Fitbit back and forth like this and I walked in I said are you cheating getting your steps you're laying there seriously doing this i totally caught him and he said it was not charged all day so when i got home i had to you know un i had to plug it and unplug it and i have to make up for what i did today <laughs> i said oh you couldn't just go out for a walk and get your steps and you just lay in bed and wiggle your fitbit but it is important to get your steps i'd recommend the real way and not the, the cheaty way, but, oh, he's hilarious. So strolling is important, going for a walk, getting your steps in, but I wanna give you my tip for walking, okay? If you are planning to go for a walk, what is so important is adequate footwear. I can't tell you how many people I have seen with bad shoes. It's not good to go for a long walk in high heels. It's not good to go for a walk in shoes that are five years old or shoes that you wear to mow the lawn and do yard work. You wanna wear good supportive shoes. And when you wear good supportive shoes, what that does is it provides a really healthy foundation for the walk that you're doing. So it can help you in the walk. Now, whether people fall to the outside or whether they fall, most of the time I see people's feet falling to the inside, which is called pronation. And then we see a lot of knee problems. We see a lot of back problems. There's a lot going on in the feet. And I, while I can't address all of that tonight, I can tell you that adequate footwear and strengthening your glutes is gonna really help with those fallen arches. But please, please, please go and get yourself some good shoes. So many great stores will now fit you. They will look at you. They'll, you can stand on the little molds. You, you can do all kinds of things. You can get inserts. You can do. All, there's all kinds of great ideas in the chat that people have found, but it is a game changer. And I want to just implore you to please get adequate footwear. And you want to change your shoes about every six months to a year, depending on how many miles you put on your shoes. Okay, moving on to Samba. So Samba is where you get a little dancing going on. And I'm not talking about like going out dancing because how are you gonna do that like subconsciously? But have you ever found yourself if the music is on and you're just 
bebop in a way, like I'm getting some neat points right now because I am into the music. And when the music's on, my heart rate is gonna get a little bit faster. Why? Because I'm enjoying myself. And if I'm bebopping to the music and I can feel the beat, my body is just naturally going to burn more calories. I wanted to share this quick tip. If you go to YouTube, and I believe it's YouTube, called the Church Clap, there is a great little dance that one of my clients, Carrie Irwin, showed me this morning. And we rocked it out doing the Church Clap. And you, where you bounce side to side, and you like have to clap under your leg. It's all kinds of fun. So look that up. There's all kinds of things that you can find to do little dances. But we're talking about getting into the groove of just feeling the beat while the music is on. So the step that you can take is have music on. Have music on. Have worship music on in the background. Have 80s music on in the background. That's what we love to see or what we uh, play all the time here. We love to hear the 80s. It just brings back such great memories. And so I encourage you to turn the music on and get your heart pumping. Ooh, Sir Mix-a-Lot, go Ryan. I see that in the chat. Don't even get me started with that song because I could do the whole thing for you. Okay, next one we're gonna go into is stairs. And every time I think of stairs, I have to mention this amazing book by Rory Baden called Take the Stairs. And the whole book is about pressing into resistance, like not taking the easy way out and going for it. So I highly recommend you take a look at the book, Take the Stairs, but that's not about meat. But stairs is all about, we live in this escalator world in more ways than one, right? It's so much easier to take the elevator and to take the escalator or to take the moving sidewalk. At least with the moving sidewalk, you're still walking. There are people that try and walk on the escalator. I am not a fan of that. That just doesn't work, people. But here's the thing. When you walk or when, when you decide to take the stairs, right, you not only are burning more calories because you're not just standing there on an escalator, but you're going up on an incline, which is going to increase your heart rate, right? Anytime that, if you ever notice that when you're walking up a hill, how much harder your heart is beating, it's because you're up on the incline and it requires more oxygen. And so <clears throat> when, when you are taking the stairs, you're increasing your oxygen, you're actually increasing your balance. But the reason I hear people say they don't like to take the stairs is because it hurts their knees. Anybody in that boat? Well, I want to give you a tip tonight about how the stairs can be better for you. You want to make sure that when you step on the stair, that if if at all possible, you get your entire foot on the, on the tread, okay? Get your entire foot on the tread, and then when you step up, you push through your heel. When you push through your heel, you activate your glute, which takes pressure off your knee, okay? So that is how you're going to do better by taking the stairs. And you don't have to take them fast, but I'll tell you the other thing about taking the stairs especially if there's no railings around, you gotta use your balance. And so increasing your balance, connecting your brain to your muscles is called neuromuscular training. You definitely wanna do more of that. You wanna use your muscles as much as you can. As we age, after the age of 26, you begin to lose muscle mass unless you use it. So let's really be intentional about using our muscles as much as we can and taking the stairs is just another way to do that. So the last thing I want to share is this word switch, because we, again, live in a world of things making it easy for us. The dishwasher has made my life so much easier. Well, having four kids can be a lot, but I have four kids now to help me wash dishes. So that does help. So I don't burn neat points from doing dishes unless I decide to pitch in and help out. But the dishwasher is one of the things that we want to ask you to just switch. One night, decide to wash the dishes instead of putting them in the dishwasher. There are things that you can do in your home, like there's in, use a broom instead of using the vacuum. It takes a lot longer to use the broom than it is to use. I have one of those vacuums quick for my kids because they don't use the broom so well. <laughs> but there are lots of things that you can do that are that you can do manually that you can really be burning more calories than using a gadget. 
So think of things in your kitchen. There's a lot, in Optavia, we do a lot of cauliflower, right? Cauliflower pizza, riced cauliflower. Well, if you take a head of cauliflower and a grater and sit there and grate, grate, grate your cauliflower, that is gonna burn some calories, right? Well, now in the freezer section, they have riced cauliflower. <laughs> so they just made it easier for us again. But if you would like to burn some calories and really go up with your neat points, use the grater and do your cauliflower that way, okay? All right, so we're moving into this Habits of Health clock. So those are our first, or all of our six S's that we have gone through and tips for you to really move forward in getting more neat points. And like I mentioned, Dr. A suggests that we get movement every 20 minutes when you're sitting. So get up and break up the monotony of sitting as much as possible. And in all of this, ask yourself, what did I learn? What does this mean to me? What are things that I can do differently than I'm doing them now? What opportunities do I have? And what action am I going to take as a result of what I've learned tonight? And I want to give you this awesome tip. If you go in to, to YouTube, YouTube has, is such a great resource of information. But if you go in to YouTube and you click on Optavia, you want to subscribe to Optavia, of course, so that you can get all the notifications. But you go to the Optavia channel and click on playlist. See, it's noted right here. When you click on playlist, you will see an option for your life book. And when you click on your life book, you can listen to Dr. A talking about all of these elements. If you do have a long travel time, like to work, and you wanna be in your life book, but you have to be sitting and reading and not driving, this would be a great opportunity for you to get some good information in while you can. So go subscribe to Optavia, go to the playlist where you can find your life book, and begin to fill your mind with the information that you need. It's not a one and done. I can't tell you how many times I've heard somebody say, I know what to do. I know all this stuff. And I'd say, well, there's a big difference between knowing and doing. And we can know things, but we have to find out if we know them, what's in the way of us doing them? What's missing? And as we identify what's missing, then we're actually able to move forward. So it's not enough to know. There's a big difference in the do. And so when you choose to do by putting the information in, allow it to soak in. Hearing it once, I don't believe, is probably enough. Listen to it over and over again. And next week, you're going to hear more about the element of exercise, but the planned exercise that we talked about at the beginning. And exercise is truly a gift that you give yourself. It's important to understand how you can implement activity into your life because it's just one of the healthy habits. There are many, but they are all meant to layer and create a healthy foundation for us to move forward long-term in our health. And so join us next week for Element 18 as we talk about EAT, the exercise activity thermogenesis, where exercise is truly the gift that you give yourself. So I wanna encourage you to hang around with us as we move into the trilogy and really understand the opportunity that we have and understanding more about Optavia and the potential that you have. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this element and I can't wait to hear how you've implemented these things in your life. This audio may have contained the personal testimonials of some independent Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. In addition, this audio may have contained income or earnings representations of some independent Optavia coaches. Optavia makes no guarantee of financial success. Success with Optavia results from successful sales efforts, which requires hard work, diligence, skill, persistence, competence, and leadership. 
please see the Optavia Income Disclosure Statement for statistics on actual earnings of coaches under the U.S. Compensation Plan, which differs from the International Compensation Plan. Yours in health, the Optavia team.